to this master class. And I'm really thrilled to work with three very talented flute players. Um, so, Joanna, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us what you're going to be playing? Sure. Uh, hi, I'm Joanna, and I'm going to play the first movement of the Nielsen Flute Contrera.
excellent work, excellent work. Um, so this is a really difficult piece, technically really challenging. Um, also musically, as you can tell, lots of really wild, wonderful things happening. Um, so I think you're doing a pretty good job with Kirito, right? I like that a lot. Um, really nice with the run down to the road <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, um, we've had a lesson once before, and there are some things I, I noticed still happening, right? I think um, there, there are a couple of big takeaways I, I give you today are that you need to know more about the orchestra part. Because there are places where the orchestra is just going to keep turning forward, and you're kind of like, well, I'm time to breathe here, I'm time to go. <laughs> and it, it's just not going to work with the orchestra part. So, um, for those of you who maybe don't know too much about this piece, um, Nielsen wrote this for his buddies. And uh, the flutist in particular, Gilbert Jesperson, was a very um, well known flute soloist, which is really saying something because he wasn't from France. And this is a time when French flute players really dominated. Um, so he was a pretty remarkable player. And he was chairman of the Players Committee for this orchestra where Nielsen knew all these people. And there are stories about Jesperson's personality, which lead people to believe that this is somewhat of a reflection upon that. <laughs> so he was known for being a very dapper dresser, and a very charming person at times, and who had a rather explosive temper at other times. And I think it's a pretty good theory, because it happens a lot in the piece, right? And there are more sort of stories about him not particularly getting along very well with the trombone player, and the music has a bit of that with the trombone. <laughs> and um, similarly with um, some timpani spots, yeah. But it's a very interesting concerto because the flute part and the orchestra part interact a great deal. It's not the usual thing with the solo part and the orchestra just sort of being the backup. There's a lot of interplay, which means that you're not quite as free, right, as, as you would like to be probably. But um, let's go straight into the Kinenza and talk about this from the big Kinenza point of view. At least the big Kinenza. There are many Kinenzas. Right, okay. So when you did this, you know, again, spectacular job of the fingers, really, you're doing great. Um, so you took a big breath in here somewhere. Where, where was that? Or was it just that one? Okay, so is that the place where you want to slow down?
It's so much better. Right. Okay, so quick clerics, do you think that sounds better? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. So to me, because it's a condenser, you really are on your own, but that gives you all the responsibility too. Like your harmony department, department, percussion department, you know, everything. And you have to be thinking about where's the music going? That's much more important than where you're going to breathe. And then sort of try and figure it out. Okay. In that little bit, you get a lot louder, a lot sooner in this stuff. And you wrote it here, right? And I think there's a little bit of this going on through the novel years. I'll pick out some other places too. But I would encourage you to kind of leave it more the way it's on the page. Because this sounds explosive. And doing the crescendo over here doesn't really. Yeah. So I think it could be more, more bombastic, which I would say is good in this. OK, and you also do a wonderful delivery over here, which sounds very beautiful and artistic. But then the piano side doesn't do anything. Maybe you don't get quite so soft. Okay. You're trying to Who here has played the 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, and who here has played one of the symphonies? Yeah, somebody? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, his music is all kind of slightly odd. What you could put it. Not, it doesn't fit with the cliches, right? It's not beautiful two bird phrases, but that's for sure. There's all sorts of odd things. Okay, add that, add into that, Mr. Jesperson. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right. Um, and let's keep going. Listen to them play 
either before or after, in a, in either in Lucas or a solo setting. And people were so generous. And, you know, I booked an hour, and most of them spent many more than one hour with me. Some people made me stay in their houses. It was just great. And all my friends said, well, you have to write a book about it. And I decided I can't do that until some people did. <laughs> but um, one of the more um, interesting bits of information that came away with that was um, from, well, from Jeannie Baxter and Jeffrey Kanger on Fibrano. Because my Fibrano is very much more an expressive device. I don't play Fibrano all the time. I personally just don't find that very appealing. Um, but it's a very distinct school. It's like a flip line, right? And, and people would say it's a dubious Baker thing, right? That, that train of play in this country has had a lot of Fibrano. And he was quoted often as saying, a note is not a real note without lots of Fibrano. You know? <laughs> So, um, Jenny Beck says her, uh, I asked her about it, and her advice was, you practice it in threes or fives. Wow, revolutionary, I never thought of that. <laughs> but threes or fives sounds way better than fours. Fours sounds really measured. It sounds like an electric organ with a radio switch on. Anyway, so, threes or fives, great idea. And she was very insistent that you need to practice it at lots of different tempos, but especially fast tempos. And she thought you should be able to do triplets at 140, which is pretty damn quick, actually. Um, and I, my, my eyes must have been sort of like sorcerers. And she said, well, you know, if you can do it at that speed with the metro, then you can do it, right? And it's just, it's just like playing scaffolds. It's absolutely true. If you broaden your technique in that sense, then there's lots of things you're disposal. So that was all very interesting. And then I had this lesson with Jeffrey Cater. And um, in his playing in particular, you really notice that the vibrato is there all the time. But it also sounds very musical. And so I launched right into that with him too. I always had these stock questions, but that was where I would talk on this with him. And he went on to explain how he practices vibrato. And this just blew my mind. He practices every phrase just with the vibrato. And it made me realize that most of us kind of hope that the vibrato is going to fit. It's a very poor second cousin in our thinking about what we're doing. So this is a classic case, actually. So um, I'm going to try and demonstrate. So I'm going to play from, actually, I'm just going to do that little bit there. OK, maybe after that, maybe. OK. So he picks it up that's kind of in the middle. So I'm going to do A. That gets more important when you've got a wider range, because it feels a bit different, right? Yeah, OK. And literally, I'm going to be thinking that, but I'm going to be imagining the different pitches. So you're just going to hear one more on the beat, but hopefully the vibrato will have some sort of shape to it. Okay. And I probably won't like what I do the first time. Right. 
that's gorgeous. Yeah, so he does that with everything he plays. Which is, whoa, a lot of investment in time, right? And I, I think it's just the most helpful thing I've ever heard about the road. Which is why I'm taking the time out to put you through this, because you need it, but it's actually really good information. So, especially this bit, this is the most beautiful bit, isn't it? I yeah. think in the whole piece. Yeah. So, um, again, breathing is a bit of an issue. But you know, um, I also studied breathing with Alan Jacobs, who's a breathing guru. And one of his favourite quips was, if you are musically really interesting, no one's going to notice the breathing. And that is so true. So, with a piece like this, yeah, you're going to have to break it up to breathe. We all know that. But you need to make it sound so beautiful that I don't care. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, so let's put back to the beginning of here. No, I have to stop. <laughs> okay, well, I'll, I'll talk just a little bit. At the beginning, okay, this room is very boomy, right? It's very, very boomy. And this is, this is kind of a good way of practice because when you place on this, hopefully you're in a bit more toy, right? Food and water straight, right? So, that's the tiny toys are that way, right? But I think. Maybe some of this is a little short, but it's important that someone listening doesn't really hear it being stirred. And I think that the, um, we were joking about this in a quintet rehearsal, but they actually, tenuto is the most confusing term out there. Music. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> so I think um, here it means these notes all have to sound heavy. Slurry actually doesn't sound heavy, right? It just, they're nice notes to hear, but this doesn't sound like that enough. Yeah. There was one um, one time the Chicago Symphony um, auditioning for a principal group asked for this movement as well. And I think that's brilliant because it covers so much different articulation. And the sense of what's going to carry in a hall. It's really, really important. So um, I I would challenge you to practice here or better in the big hall. <laughs> and record yourself. Literally put your phone out where you think the movement should be and listen to see what comes across and see if that's what you want. We kind of have to figure out what's actually going to do the job that represents what's on the page rather than being correct, you know? Yeah. And I think when you get into the staccatos, you're doing a very nice job of that. Um, but what I'm hearing right now is kind of long, long and short. And um, I think this could have a sort of meaner, more dominating sort of thing. Yeah. And conversely, I think you should try to keep your dynamic a little bit more under control in this, this stuff. You sometimes do kind of nice hairpins, <laughs> and you do things like you did in the beautiful Dominion window there. Yeah, lots of things you're adding, which um, you've got the really good addition, so I would just try and just do a little bit more just what's on the page. Save, save the interpretive stuff of the things where there's space for you to do that, and it makes sense with the industry, right? Yeah. Okay. Beautiful job. Thank you. Thank you. So here we have Lindsay. Can you tell us? Hi, I'm doing a lot of hard seal off.
Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. So I get look at your shoulder a little bit. Oh. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm remembering this right. Okay. So lovely. Um, I think what we should explore a little bit is a little intonation. Where um, you sound. I mean, you have a beautiful sound. You, I mean, your sound is very distinctive, right? And I, I feel like you are very attuned to where that the angle where notes speak beautifully. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, when you're playing softer, that that angle is just going to be able to play up. Right. So the first place I notice that being an issue is somewhere in the beginning, actually. Um, it might be in, in here. I think after these photos, the other stuff seems whew, kind of a bow. Do you want another go at the top? So 
Arab world is not to say the A is the one that's most likely to be the threat, actually. But I think um, that already sounds a lot better to me. And I think you just have to be brave. Yeah. <laughs> so let's go back to playing the whole thing and we'll go through it here. Sorry, 
when you have the control to do it, so it's just incredibly mechanical and boring and flat, then, then you have like a clean plate, right? And to, to add what you want to have happen in that is quite a different experience. Yeah, and I think you've got such great control over, you know, what you're doing with the answer, you just have to put it in the right spot. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I think that would be useful. Okay, so let me get back to my music in this piece. We've got the beginning, which is kind of like atmospheric, I think, right? Does that stuff come back in there? Oh, uh, no, it's just... It's kind of just the beginning, yeah. isn't it? Let's try and remember it. Yeah, I think you're right. It's just the beginning. Okay. So we've got scene center, right? All the more reason to keep that kind of mild, actually. You're doing too much too soon. Okay. If you actually kept this mezzo piano, mm -hmm. then the forte here would have more impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So scene setting, it's just like saying, oh, the sky was nice and blue. Yeah, but it's okay. Yeah. Kind of that. <laughs> All right, then you've got some character, right? And then you have this wonderful detour into being flamboyant and, and going with the wind. Okay, and then this thing. You play this so intense. <laughs> this is like, oh my god, it's a matter of life or death. <laughs> this is just San Dantino, right? I think it's cruisy. What else do you know of how strokes music? Okay. Well, I mean, probably a lot of us are in that boat, right? Um, Adolphus House Dork, he's still around. He teaches, he's a professor emeritus, I think somewhere in Mississippi. I recently discovered his music too, like a lot of people. Um, I heard a very beautiful thing he wrote for viola and organ, of all things. But he's written a lot of music that's actually very serious, um, a lot of inspired by a lot of social activism. Yeah, and important things. Um, this is obviously a lighter piece, right? But I think you could easily say that he's very good at conveying character, like that's important. And his music, um, he's very adept at incorporating um, what might be more popular musical styles. And I think that you need to find a range of, this is intense, this is not. Yeah. So, how about trying a bit of this for me? Pretend you're just sort of playing to yourself and you're out in the woods and you're just improvising. Just lay back.
Supreme Court. Try to keep it there. Yeah. <laughs> you just want to go woof into those high notes. Yeah, just save it, save it. And it only says in it, right? Save the foilers. Save it for the other stuff coming up. Yeah. Um, I've heard people do this for their speed up sooner, and I can kind of understand why you want to do that. Because this sort of feels like it could be the, the, the doing stuff, right? It feels like it could be yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think maybe you could be um, a little bit more sustained through some of these phrases. Uh, it's got the slurs finish, but maybe you don't need to make as much of a gap with the breathing. You, know, it's, you, can, you can have a phrase and still be sustaining the sound, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So, especially if you're playing solo, longer lines sound great. And, unless you desperately need to breathe, you know, it's, of course you should, yeah. Um, but I liked all this so much nicer. Now, I, I want to say, I know it doesn't say to play this, right? And the Freudian thing is just there. But I don't think you should play this with the same style as this time. Yeah, I think this is way more interesting. It sounds more like this music mm -hmm. to me. Yeah. Okay, so, I don't want to, no, stop. Ah! <laughs> okay, I just wanted to say very quickly uh, when you're doing this stuff, um, the dynamics here are written for you, that's terrific. <laughs> but make sure that you, you are pulling out these low notes when, when that, that echo stuff stops, mm -hmm. right? Same as the beginning. And at the end, this is really difficult to, see, to hear. Um, this, uh, that, that, that stuff I think is really, really confusing. In this acoustic, you are doing it too fast for us to kind of get what's going on. It just sounds like a really messy. Yeah, so I think probably for this sort of acoustic, this whole chunk probably needs to go just a little slower. You have to be careful you don't wind up slowing down right here because that would be, that would, that would sound really bad, right? So just a little bit more deliberate, a little bit back from here. Okay, and then this thing here, um, the slurs over the top, I think you have too much nuance going on here. Da 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 like a long nuance. Yeah. Great pictures. Good. Okay. Very beautiful.
So I, um, I mean, good job with her fingers and everything like that. Um, nice musical and this. Um, I think that there is room for more exploration of sound. Right, this is French music, and yeah, it's kind of a, a beautiful thing about music. Where do you think you want to sound best? Where is the place where you think you need to have an indescribably beautiful sound? Which bit? Yeah. Right there. Yes. Show me the sound that you think you want to hear. And um, 
by me doing this, you didn't know when I was going to change fingers, right? So you weren't able to do your anything. <laughs> so I took away your anything. But the sound still worked, right? You still got the sounds out. I'm sure it felt terrible. I'm sure you didn't like what happened. <laughs> but it still basically worked, right? So I think it would be really interesting for you um, at home to try something else. This sounds really unorthodox. I apologize in advance. So you lie down on the ground, right? And you have to put your knees up in the air, kind of like an Alexander technique mm -hmm. position. You've done that, okay? Um, so you're going to spread your shoulders out, feel more nice and comfy, your knees up in the air. And um, get someone to help you and prop some pillows under your arms so you can sort of replicate the plane position. And let the foot just rest on your chin, right? The, 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 the feeling of weight in the instrument will provide plenty of pressure, right? And you can get used to the idea of actually playing in a very relaxed state. Of course, we can't do that when we're standing up, right? But you're all the way over here in a tight, 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 tight. <laughs> and I'd love you to see what it's like over here in the very relaxed, right? So you can wind up somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Just just the the pressure I, I, I can't like we use it. But as a teacher I try really hard to avoid talking about pushing through the chin. Right? Because it just it just gets in the road with so many other things. Yeah. Okay, so this D. Play the D one more time. See if you can just think about something where right? your your face is in the right place, you pick the right place and pick it. There's no problem with that. You don't need to do this. <laughs> and I want you to imagine, don't even time, right? We're just going to aim for a D that comes out of nowhere. Just play a beautiful D. Right. That actually has a better sound than the one you did in the piece. You agree? Yeah. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Alright. So then the next step would be to try and get that going through all of those notes, right? Because you you mess around with it so much. Um, we talked the other day about trying to hear yourself more from a distance, and I think that's that's a really crucial part of this, actually. Because flute players get pretty hung up on got to sound clean, got to sound nice and pretty right here, but actually a lot of really fantastic players don't sound very nice when they're right next to them. They're making a sound that works really well on a hall, and it can be quite fluffy. Up, up here, it might sound alarmingly coarse, actually. Um, when I get guest artists in for my students, I try to make sure that they will get the opportunity to hear them in close proximity, as well as further away, so that they get um, begin to understand how sound is different at a distance. And um, a lot of the time, orchestral players in particular, because they're working so hard to put out a, a big volume and to compete with the other things in an orchestra, often sound pretty rough indeed, of course, right? Your sound is so fine that basically you're stopping yourself from playing with a bigger sound, right? The aperture sound is just too small. Yeah. And the, the feeling of, like if I switch into orchestral mode, First thing I do is my back foot better, right? <laughs> There's a certain amount of going on with that all the time, right? If I was playing for a microphone, it's a bit closer. It's, everything's constrained, right? I just bring everything in. But it's, it's important to understand that most people aren't here, and the, the microphone is closed, right? But your audience is not. Yeah. So if you can work on the, the frame of the part, then it's actually a lot easier to play in a more lyrical way. You use more air, you're using less lip stuff. And things like this come across as much, um, well, it's easier to match the sounds, and it's easier to play them smoothly. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So, I know this says Dolce Espresso Go and you're thinking about being very soft. Um, maybe it doesn't need to be that soft, actually, because it's, it's a beautiful tune, right? And I think Dolce Espresso Go, to me that's not really literally piano, right? That's kind of like 
make it sound beautiful. It's kind of softish, this bit, you know. <laughs> yeah, okay. So let's go from the top one more time. And you're going to do all your dark stuff here, and I don't care about that. That's absolutely fine. Do whatever you want. When you get to here, I want to hear the most spectacular D ever. Yeah, I love it. 
fixing each node as you go along, right? Yeah, you're, you're making this note. Um, sorry, I might say stuff like on leak here. You're, you're like making each one sort of sound perfect as you go by. And the effect is kind of every note sounds very really separate. Yeah. Okay, so when I'm thinking about. Um, I'm kind of just taking them as, as they land. So is that is that like that F at that point? Is that the best F I can make? No. But I know it's the one where I can get to the next one without doing anything radically different. <laughs> but I think the end result is it sounds more smooth and more like a pretty phrase. Yeah. I think if you're going to worry about the sound of every note, that's really difficult. But you could worry about the sound of the notes that sort of matter, right? So which notes do you think they are here? The F, of course. Yeah, it's got a 10 minus, so you can't really ignore it. Yeah. Okay, so have another go and see if you can just blow through the other ones.
which sort of feels easier. It's like you've got a destination thing coming. Do you want to try? Beautiful plan. Thank you very much.